<clears throat> All right, let's go. All right, so Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. Hi, my name's Steve Caputo, I'm, and my purpose in life is to help people grow and learn. Currently, one way that I do that is at the manager of organizational development at Cottage Health. What I'm going to share with you today is a way of looking at problems differently. <clears throat> Many people start their day with the phone ch alarm chirping, we check Facebook email news, we decide what to wear and what to eat, we drive to work listening to the radio or on the phone, we walk into the day full of meetings, interactions, distractions, emails, to-dos, and projects. We end our day with the radio, the phone, TV shows, a quick game of Candy Crush before we go to bed. We're human doings, do, do, do. So I'm gonna suggest we be mindful. Be present what's most important now. Unfortunately, this can also look like you're not doing anything. Once I was sitting at my uh, work with my eyes closed thinking about a question I was going to ask during a focus group and my boss came up and asked, what are you doing? I slowly opened my eyes and said, I'm thinking. Well, they said, they didn't really say it, but they looked at me like, get back to work. So for a while now, I've been having, um, thinking about a, a model to think differently. It's sort of counterintuitive thinking, but not really. It's sort of outside the box, but not quite. It's sort of shifting your paradigm, but not entirely. And what's kept me from developing this idea is how to really, uh, what to call it. So that's where you come in, some homework. So I'm going to uh, give you several examples of problems that were solved by looking at the issues a different way. As you hear them, think how you might describe to someone else in one or two words what kind of thinking resulted in this unique solution. Sometimes I have to describe this process of going the opposite direction. So you tell me. So let's start with a classic example. On April 13, 1970, after two successful lunar landings, Apollo 13 launched into space. 180,000 miles from Earth, a de devastating malfunction leaves the spacecraft leaking oxygen and draining their power. They're stranded because there isn't enough fuel to make it back to Earth. The crew of three astronauts face a life of de and death crisis because they will die of carbon dioxide poisoning, dehydration, and the freezing temperatures of deep space. Their solution? Fly towards the moon, burning all of their fuel, then using the gravitational forces of the moon to slingshot themselves back to Earth. Talk about going in the opposite direction to solve your problems. They literally took this. Now, during World War II, mathematician Abraham Wald undertook a study with the British Air Ministry on how to best retrofit armor on the bombers. In order to find out the vulnerable parts of the plane, he observes more than 50 planes coming back from a bombing mission and marks every bullet as a red dot on the lower diagram. So where does he recommend to put the armor? On the parts where there are no red dots. Well, why? Because those sections must be the most vulnerable since none of those returning planes had any holes there. The thinking was that any bullet hole in those areas must have been what caused the planes to crash. The lesson there is the data that isn't there can be just as important as the data that is there. So a UK, a UK uh, TED talk by Hillary Codnam um, shows that when a family falls into crisis and sometimes happens due to unemployment, drugs, bad relationships, or bad luck, the social services system steps in and helps. A typical British family in crisis can tap into more than 70 different agencies at a cost of tens of thousands of dollars. But what she found is relationships can actually be more important than putting a small amount of money towards that. So how about some examples that make uh, sense for you guys? So you want to motivate someone, give them a carrot. Uh, in Daniel Pink's book, Drive, he found that as long as the task was simple and straightforward and used only mechanical skills, the carrot bonus worked. However, when a task gets more complicated and requires some conceptual creative thinking, carrot motivators don't work. As a matter of fact, larger rewards actually result in poorer performance. People need autonomy, mastery, and purpose. We want engagement through self-direction, and they want to become expert and make a difference. So several years ago, we did a home remodel, and we had some white carpet that was really more beige, so we pulled it out and replaced it. So what do we do with that old carpet that was still fairly good? Well, I put it on Craigslist and said it was good garage carpet. First $50 gets it. It was gone in an hour. Take this masterpiece and put it on your curb and say it's free and it could sit for a couple of days. Free means something might be wrong with it. Charge even a little bit and there's some value. So every few weeks, Kohl's runs a sale where Kohl's charge card holders get Kohl's cash for every dollar spent. Now I might be able to retire shortly with all the Kohl's cash we have. Better spend it right. Or better yet, check prices on what you really want to get because even the Kohl's cash, might, you might find it cheaper elsewhere. So our paradigms kind of keep us stuck. Want to lose weight? The worst thing to do is fast or eat less. Rather, eat more high quality food. The items on the left are 510 calories. One on the right, 290 calories. If you eat the right things, the quantity and frequency of your meals can increase. It's just counterintuitive to eat more. 
High intensity interval training involves inter, uh, training with high intensity and low intensity. For example, spring for 30 seconds, then walking for 60 seconds. Think about CrossFit. HIIT training can be done in a fraction of the time and the overall effect can be similar to long distance slow training. Over the last several years, I've run two dozen half marathons and my next one in December will solely be through HIIT training. Want to lose weight? Want to be more productive? Sleep more. Many of us wear short, this, this badge of uh, honor on short sleep cycles of less than six hours. Research shows that our bodies lose weight faster with at least seven hours of sleep. And think of all the crap we eat after midnight. Okay, guys, listen up. I'm sure you've figured it out. It's in our DNA to fix things. But sometimes your wife doesn't want you to fix things. Just listen. Women solve their problems and work through them by talking about them. Validate their feelings. Don't fix them. Consider thinking like you are from Venus, and that will help a lot. So lastly, the Gallup organization has identified that everyone needs to have some form of recognition every seven days. Nine out of 10 times we recognize the things we are not, that were not done. We need to recognize what is done. With that, I sincerely thank you for all coming tonight and listening to us. Um, I want to thank Sarah, my wife, for encouraging me to uh, do this presentation, and Bruce for organizing it. So you tell me, you know, what should I call this problem-solving method? You know, because counterintuitive, out-of-the-box, paradigm shifting to go in the opposite direction is just too long. So email me your ideas and stories, and I'll be happy to uh, take them into consideration. Thank you very much.